everybody and welcome to yet another product review here on Starship Adventures. My name's Ian and uh, we're back in the realm of ham radio today and we're going to be discussing some uh, some different two-way radios that are out there. And uh, on our last review, we did the UV-82, uh, which is a great radio uh, that's made by Baofeng. Now today, we're going to be doing a different one. This one is, uh, is the uv uh, this one here is the TH-UV-8000D. This is made by TYT. And if I had to recommend an inexpensive Chinese radio at this point, this would be the one I would recommend, even over the Baofengs uh, or some of the other ones that are out there. I've had this radio, this particular radio, personally now for over two years. I carry it nearly every day. Um, I have talked all over the place on it. I've, I've used it on all kinds of repeaters. I monitor our local fire department on it. Uh, I, I have all kinds of stuff programmed into it, and it's an amazing, uh, amazing radio. Some of the great things about this radio, and we're talking about the TYT Electronics, TYT Electronics model TH-UV-8000D, the UV-8000. The UV-8000D and the UV-8000E are essentially the same radio. Um, as a matter of fact, I think this is a D. I've got a D and an E. Um, this particular radio has a wonderful battery on it. Uh, it. Unfortunately, the way the radio is designed, you cannot add a larger battery, but the one that it comes with uh, is a lot of milliamps and it lasts for a long time. Um, I've left this radio on and come back a day later and it still shows half the battery. So you've got probably two days worth of standby. Uh, these radios get really good gas mileage on standby. Um, uh, talking, you get a lot less and I'll tell you why. This is a 10 watt radio. Now, I have tested it myself and it puts out about nine watts. Um, I know that uh, in the first, the first days of Chinese radios, the numbers were very exaggerated. And as we've gone on, the numbers have become closer and closer to reality. In fact, the brand new UV25 that just came out from Baofeng was just tested, and it's a 10-watt radio, and it puts out, in fact, 10 watts on both 70 centimeters and 2 meters. Uh, so that's that's amazing. So um, they finally have, have stepped up to the plate when it comes to wattage. The TYT, I find TYT radios to be as good or even slightly better than Baofeng radios. They're a little bit more. This one right here will run you about $60. Now, let me tell you why you would buy a $60 radio versus a $35 radio. The, this radio gives you about 9 watts of transmit on 2 meters and about 7 watts on 70 sems. That's really not bad. Uh, the other thing I like about it is the small size. One thing I didn't like about it at first was the round design. And you can see here it's a very rounded design. Uh, I got used to it. I was a Motorola guy, so I was used to carrying around a square brick. Uh, this round design, I, I couldn't keep it in my hands at first, but it's actually done really well. Um, the radio takes the standard uh, mic that you would find on any of these radios, okay? And that's nice that it uses standard equipment. Um, also, it's programmed through that same plug. It programs with Chirp, or there's a, uh, a program that comes with it. The bandwidth on it is really, really wide. I've got it right here. 136 to 174 megahertz for two meters or VHF. And then for UHF, it is 400 all the way up to 520 megahertz. That is an incredibly wide bandwidth. Um, and of course, you need a license to operate on most of those frequencies, and that would be up to you to do that research. Uh, so anyway, the other neat thing about this radio is like the Baofeng, you can take the antenna off and you can add a different antenna. And, and for example, uh, I've got this long antenna here, and I, for those of you who have watched my reviews before, I'm not a big fan of these tall antennas. They generally don't help much. I don't know why. I have some good abris, and I have one or two that are counterfeits. None of them seem to work all that well. That would give me about the same transmit and receive as I get with the standard antenna. Why is that? Well, the radio was designed with this antenna and this frame being held by a human holding the radio like this. So if you 
want the best performance out of the radio, pretty much you would want to keep those pieces of equipment together and you would want to hold it in front of you and you become part of the ground with the frame of the radio and then the antenna being, uh, uh, being your driven element. But um, if you put some other antenna on there, it's a wild card. It may or may not provide a better radio experience. Now, uh, one thing you certainly can do with these, and it's something I strongly suggest, is get, get you one of these to hook into where the antenna goes. And then you can hook up any antenna on here, any mag mount, all the way up to a tower antenna. We did an experiment one day, and we hooked this radio, this 9-watt radio up through this connector. And I used a patch cable. And I hooked it into an antenna that had a t uh, uh, up at 50 feet, uh, a really nice uh, ham radio antenna that was up on a friend's tower at 50 feet. And this thing at 9 watts at 50 feet on a great big antenna up there, Colenier, um, the performance was amazing. Um, we were talking all over three counties with it. So uh, it, it's a great radio. And with the ability to add an antenna, to add a microphone and all that kind of stuff, uh, it makes it a wonderful radio. has 200 channels. You can use Chirp to program it. And remember, when you're using Chirp, learn, go in and learn how to, how to download frequency sets to save yourself some time. You can literally download and install the frequencies from your county and your radio in about seven clicks. It's really worth the time to learn how to do it. And it's a lot easier than going through and typing the name and the transmit frequency and the receive frequency and so on and so forth. So uh, learn how to how to download those channel groups in Chirp. And a couple of quick suggestions. Don't buy the cheap mic for 8 bucks. Spend the 25 and get the nice mic so that you can hear it. I know it seems kind of crazy to spend $35 on a radio and $25 on a mic. But if you want a good listening experience, you don't want to sound like you're in the mud. Spend the 25 bucks and get you a B-Tech or one of these nicer mics. It needs to look something like a cop would have clipped on his uniform uh, and not something kind of cheap looking like this. Uh, and that's pretty much my advice. Now, as far as this goes, this is the radio I would buy. If I was going out today uh, to purchase a radio, I might, I might, get, that, uh, I might get that UV25R uh, from Baofeng, that new one that looks like a Motorola. That's probably the one I would get today. But tried and true, this is my favorite radio. This is the one I carry around every way, everywhere. It's the TYT Electronics TH. UV9000D and the UV9000E. And now that we're towards the end of the video here, I'm going to tell you the neatest thing about this radio. But you got to remember, it's neat, but you have to use it properly. It has a cross-band repeater. Yes, a portable radio with a cross-band repeater. You can literally have a buddy on, on a UHF frequency and another buddy on a VHF frequency and use your radio as a cross-band repeater and talk to both of them. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's a really neat function. Uh, I've only used it a few times. I've wired up my spare radio as a repeater a couple times for events and stuff, and it works. The problem is the heat dissipation on these. It gets way too hot if it's used a lot. So uh, it's kind of a neat thing to know that it's in there, but I've only used it practically twice, and it did get hot both times. Matter of fact, it got so hot that it melted my 12-volt battery eliminator. So there you go. All right, there you go. That is my review for the TYT Electronics THUV uh, 8000D and the 8000E. Amazing radios. Program them with Chirp and have a good time with them. And make sure you're licensed to operate on the channel you're operating on. Have fun with your radios out there, and we'll see you next time. My name's Ian, and this is Starship Adventures. <laughs>